and welcome to this uh, Skype conversation with uh, Ken Wilson uh, to ELT Chatters. He is known as Ken Wilson London. <laughs> to separate from all the other Ken Wilsons on Twitter, I suppose. Uh, Ken has kindly agreed to give us a video interview and uh, on the occasion of ELT Chat first uh, ELT Chat's first birthday. So thank you for agreeing to do that, Cam. You're most welcome and happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> I'll pass on the message to all ELT Chats. So <laughs> all it's our collective birthday. Um, the reason I contacted you is uh, because you're very much involved in materials development and uh, you have good strong views about things and you express them on your blog very often so it's great um, and recently we've had uh, various uh, discussions related to topics uh, which I'm hoping you comment on. The first uh, topic uh, of the chat next last week uh, actually before our birthday um, weekly chat uh, was on reading aloud. That's right I noticed. Mm -hmm. Yes and you have expressed uh, quite strong views against reading aloud in the past. This was also the general attitude in the chat, but there were still quite a lot of people who were uh, quite astonished uh, with our views. So would you like to explain why you were uh, against reading aloud? Okay, well the first thing is to say is there are lots of ways to use reading aloud in a classroom situation which are very beneficial. Um, both in terms of the event itself and in the uh, development of the skills of the learners. But my main thing, and it, this all started because, of course, I've been writing course book materials for about 20 years now, and during that time, one of the things I like best is the opportunity which the publishers give you to go and sit and watch other people teaching. Um, to sit at the back of the class usually and to see how, and then the main thing is to watch how the teacher uses the material she's using and how the students react to it. Yeah. It's, it's all about that. If, if you're going to write a new book, you have to see what people are doing with the existing books. And uh, I always sit at the back. I never take notes. I smile all the time. I think the worst thing you can do is take notes in a situation like this. So the teacher presumes you're writing something negative. So I take no notebook in with me and I smile constantly throughout the class <laughs> and I also offer the teacher the chance. No, this is serious stuff. Marisa, it's because very of, serious, of, I agree to with you. Begin with, to begin with, I was aware of the fact that particularly non-native speaker teachers were quite alarmed about having me in the classroom. And also I discovered the, the more I did it that many of them had been asked by their head teacher to do it and weren't terribly enthusiastic about the situation. So I've done everything I can in my power to make this a, a less uh, difficult um, situation for the teacher, including I tell them at the beginning, if you like, I can take half the class for you, you see, and I'll do a quarter of the class, whatever you want. Um, and then I go and sit at the back, and I have to say that occasionally I get a little bit bored, but mostly I'm fascinated by what people are doing. I'm just endlessly fascinated and delighted to see what teachers do with printed material. Uh, and I really mean that. I mean, the things that you'd never imagine, oh, that's a really clever idea, and, I'm, and I smile even more, and I want to make a note of it, but I'm not making notes because I promise not to make notes. But the one classroom activity which I've seen perhaps more than any other is when the class reaches a reading text and the teacher says, open the book at page 26, there's a reading text about Mount Everest, and says to one of the students at the front, read the first line. And you know what I'm talking about, because this, and it really is the most common way that you see reading aloud in class. So sitting at the back, without a book, I can barely hear anything at all. That's what I can hear. And of course, these children have their back of their head to me, which is because most classrooms are still in rows, which is an unsuccessful way to have any speaking yeah. activity, even, a, even a, a successful one, if everybody is looking at the back of other people's heads. These are classic circumstances that most people teach in. 
And when they get, and so it's, it's a problem in many areas, but particularly if they ask the students to read aloud. Nobody else can hear, everybody else is just following it in the book. And as Sean Banville said when, when I blogged about this, they're actually counting the sentences to see when they probably get asked to read and yes. sitting in some nervous tension because of that. When is it Everything about done? this activity as it stands is unsuccessful. Nobody's listening, everybody else is reading, but more importantly, the production of English shown by these students when they read aloud from a book is not as good as their genuine spoken ability. Yeah. And I know this because having offered the chance to the teacher that I take part of the class, I then address these same kids who I've heard stumbling through this language, and they speak much better than that. Yeah. So that's my, my, my main view about it. And I, there's lots and lots of ways you can have reading aloud in class that's a success. You can, have our, our, you can give people a set of instructions to read to other people in the class which they must follow, things like that. There are lots of successful ways to have reading aloud, not in that plenary situation and not looking at the back of people's heads. That's going to be unsuccessful, however good the situation is. And the interesting thing was, I put this, I did a talk last year called 10 Things I Think I Know About Teaching and Learning. I did it for the first time at ISFL Hungary, and nine of the 10 things that I said, everybody completely agreed with. And the one thing that upset people in this audience was this idea they should stop reading aloud in class, the way I suggested. In other words, I was saying there's lots of ways to read aloud, but this one really doesn't work. And people came up to me afterwards, and Hungarians are very deep thinkers, but they're not the most um, expressive. I mean, they're very expressive people, but they don't, they're not like Greeks. They don't run at you with their arms, you know, waving wildly. Oh, do you, you, th you, th you think I do that? Marisa, if you disagree with something at my talk, you'd come up to me and you'd tell me in very strong terms, right? <laughs> but the Hungarians came up and told me very quietly and very... Um, articulately why they disagree with this thing. And they say things like, if they don't read in class, most of them don't get any chance to speak. No, no, no speaking practice. Oh, oh, my phone's ringing. Oh, my goodness. Can we just pause this for a moment? Sorry. Hello? Oh, sorry. It's advertising. Doesn't Good. matter. I can edit this bit out. <laughs> right. Um, so I was interested in the fact that... Um, you know, that all these teachers from their different uh, sets of circumstances agree with absolutely everything in my talk, which was, you know, an interesting Hang on a minute. experience. I've got a connection problem. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, okay. Can you repeat the last phrase? I was just thinking that it, it was a surprise to me that so much of what I said in this talk was accepted by so many one. people in the, in the group. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I expect to say something a bit controversial or a bit, you know, that people might disagree with, and often because um, a lot of my ideas, uh, like my drama ideas, you know, I'm, I'm a tall, quite noisy male native speaker, and most of the people I talk to are non-native speaker women who aren't tall and don't have a loud voice. <laughs> so you see, the, cir <laughs> the circumstances their working circumstances are a little bit different because of that. So they'll say to me, I can't do that. I say, I couldn't do that because I can't, you know, dominate the classroom the way you do that. And I think, okay, that's, I wish that's it wasn't enough. the case. Huh? It's fair well, enough. People's physical presence very, counts very much. Yeah, but I, 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 so that's why when I wrote my book, Drama and Improvisation, I made sure that I took out any activity. I didn't include any activity that I thought required a very dominating, noisy presence in the classroom to make it work. I mean, I don't want my activities, I don't want any drama activities in the book to require that. So, you know, so I've been a bit careful, I've been trying to be a bit careful. So Can that's why... I just why ask you um, what you think uh, reading aloud does uh, for reading comprehension, if you don't think uh, uh, it does anything to improve speaking skills, which I tend to... It certainly doesn't do anything to improve speaking skills.